My name is uh, Deborah Bowling Jackson. Was married to Hal Jackson for 25 years. Eighties wow. rhythm, nineties groove. Celebrating 25 years of the Sunday classics with Hal Jackson. It's 107.5 WBLS New York. Good afternoon and welcome to the Sunday Classics. I'm Hal Jackson. Happy Sunday. Happy Easter Sunday. I'm Debbie B. Happy Easter. Well, he started his career, I believe, in 1939. He was, uh, he tried to get on radio. There was no black radio announcers in D.C. at that time. He went to WINX, which was owned by the New York Post, and told them that he wanted to do a show on their radio. And um, they looked at him and said, no N-word is going to ever be on his radio station. And um, so how being the person that he was went out and got different people to back him. He got the people to buy the time on the radio station. And I think it was a 15 minute show, but they, they called in and said, we want to buy this 15 minute block. They bought the block and he walked in two or five minutes before the show and they couldn't turn him down because the time had been purchased and then the show was so huge that he had three different radio shows, three different time slots, three different radio stations, three different cities, which was unheard of at that time. I met Mr. Jackson 35 years ago. Um, I was a participant in the Hal Jackson Talented Teens International competition, the New York State um, local. And uh, I met him, I was one of 50, competing for the title of Miss New York State. Um, and we had a week of cultural events. We went to uh, see dignitaries, we went to shows, but it was my first time away from home and um, it was an experience. And so when I look back, I say, you know, wow, what a fortunate experience for someone my age. And it was all because of Mr. Jackson and his vision. And that vision was to provide opportunities for young African-American women to be exposed to the performing arts. He started out with a talk show and then he moved into music. And because he was on the air, different acts would come to the radio station wanting to have their records play. He would play them. And he got to know a lot of people. Michael Jackson, Janet Jackson, Diana Ross, Lionel Richie, Stevie Wonder. Um, I know that when we started dating, he, he, I didn't know the real person that he was because he was always really humble. He just loved what he did. And uh, the one thing that he's always said that is if you can find what it is that you like to do, then you, won't, you will be happy for the rest of your life because you'll be going to work and doing what you like to do and you're gonna get paid for it. And that's what he did. He loved radio. So um, he was always happy when he went to work. I started working with them probably in college as a production assistant um, because I would come back and give back. Um, not only did I do the management of the production, but I also traveled with them. And that in and of itself, I, I, I say thank you to Mr. Jackson and Mrs. Jackson for letting me even fill up my passport. My passport book would not have half of the destinations had it not been for the opportunities that he provided and that ultimately Debbie Jackson provided as well. But it, it, it was awesome. He was a scorpion and therefore he could be uh, a little rough and people would not believe that he could curse like a sailor, but he did. Um, and, but the thing about him was that if you made him mad, he would let you know right then and there and then behind it, he would hug you. He never held on to any animosities or anything like that. He would just, he would, um, he would let you know. You would know, <laughs> but um, he didn't hold on to any of that. I'm Hal Jackson. True freedom can only be achieved when you give. He was very easygoing, very calm. Um, had a lot of presence you knew when he walked into a room. But one of the things that I really liked about him is that he allowed you to do what you do. He wasn't a micromanager or anything like that. When he had the confidence in you, he allowed you to run free and to be as creative as you wanted to be. And um, I, I can't thank them enough. I can't thank him enough. 
Mr. Jackson's vision was to provide opportunities for African-American young women at a time when those opportunities weren't available. And so when you create a stage for them and you appreciate them and you lift them up, the sky is the limit in terms of where they can go. And I think that was a passion for him. And I think that was the, the motivation behind creating such a, a program like Talented Teens. But I'll never forget the day that my daughter was born. The whole staff got around the webcam and it must have been about 10 of us. And Mr. Jackson was sitting center. And he's like, hey, Nadine, hey. And so I lifted up my daughter and he saw her and he was so filled. Like you could tell that he was just like, wow, my baby, my baby had a baby. And he was so happy for me and you can genuinely see that in his face. And it just, you know, um, now that I think back, it made, it made me feel special, you know, because I had become a part of this family and we, we loved each other. We loved what we did. We loved each other. And I'm just, he wasn't just the man who was behind talented teens. He was like a father. And so for that, I'm even that much more thankful for what he provided me with in this lifetime. His mother died first and then his father died. I believe both of them were gone by the time he was eight. And he had to live with an aunt who wasn't very nice. And then he was on his own from the time he was 14. He started out on his own. And he, he as they say, pulled himself up by his bootstraps. So if anybody would tell him that he couldn't do something, that would make him even more wanting to do it. I feel blessed. I feel so blessed that, uh, you know, I'm able to have come this far and to share um, all the blessings I've had. He was the best husband that anyone would ever want. There wasn't a day that went by that he didn't tell me he loved me. He'd wake up, I'd say, Haru, Haru, wake up. He'd open his eyes and say, I love you, Dubba. <laughs> <laughs> every day, every day. He was, he, he was just a joy to be around. He was just the best husband. He never, I never felt as if there may have been somebody else that he was interested in. I mean, I, I never had a doubt that he, he, I knew he loved me and I loved him just as much. He was just a wonderful man. I, it, it, any person that you interview and ask them, what do they think about Hal Jackson? You will get the same thing. It, he was always humble. He was always nice. Just a nice, 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 nice person. You know, think about all the many young ladies that have gone through the program that they didn't win, but they just went for They just walked through. And you have doctors, you have lawyers, you know, all these individuals who went through the Talented Teens program at a very young age and was exposed. And so all you have to do is plant the seed. That's all you have to do. And that's what he did for us. He planted the seed and then sat back and watched it grow. And so for that, I would say, I love you. I miss you. You got to come back. You got to come back. You can't just stay up there. You got to come back and continue to plant seeds. But he's... He's the man. You start your head start sharing everything turns out much more beautiful and uh, if you open up your heart you will find that you can help other people when you share and you do and you help you sleep good when you operate that way God gives you more blessing
God gives you the strength to do other things. As long as you live to share what you have. Thank you.